Today we're going to head back to the American Southwest in an attempt to explain one of America's wildest national parks, Bryce Canyon. Our story starts in 1200 AD when the group of Native Americans known as the Paiute moved to the Bryce Canyon area. A Paiute Indian was responsible for the death of John Gunnison, who was talked about in last week's episode. Permanent settlements were not established within the canyon itself, as the canyon was of hunting and gathering use. However, the Paiute believed that before humans existed, a group of beings known as the Legend People roamed the area. However, the Legend People had committed a serious crime against the gods at some point or another, and so the Great Coyote was sent to turn them into rocks, therefore causing the rock formation seen in Bryce Canyon today. The first settlers of note arrived in the Bryce Canyon area in 1874 and established the town of Clifton nearby. The following year, a man named Ebenezer Bryce arrived in the Clifton area and helped make the canyon more accessible to the town people. Settlers began calling the collection of rocks Bryce's Canyon, and the name soon caught on. Bryce and his family left the town in 1880, but Clifton had already been abandoned in 1877, while the town of Cannonville quickly grew in size and paved the way for the town of Tropic to come about in 1891. By 1915, the canyon had grown so popular that J.W. Humphrey, a U.S. Forest Service supervisor, attempted to turn the canyon and the surrounding area into a national park. His work paid off in 1923 when President Warren Harding declared Bryce Canyon a national monument. Only five years later, on February 25, 1928, Bryce Canyon became the 19th national park. Today, most people visit Bryce Canyon to see the hoodoos, which is the formal term for the rocks inside the canyon. Perhaps the best feature at Bryce Canyon is the Navajo Loop Trail, which provides the hikers with the chance to see awesome hoodoo such as Thor's Hammer and Wall Street. The Queen's Garden Trail provides a different view of the canyon, working its way down towards the canyon floor, where one can imagine Queen Victoria staring up at the hoodoos above. The best time of day to admire Bryce Canyon is at sunset, when the last glimmering rays of sun bounce and reflect off the hoodoos in the canyon, providing a spectacular show of colors. Utah certainly has a lot to offer, and Bryce Canyon National Park is a great way to explore the wild side of the Beehive State. 